Welcome back to Test Lucky, the YouTube channel where you can follow the adventures of Lucky the Tesla. Welcome back to another episode of Talk Tesla Time with my friend Rob. Hi, Rob. Hey, Jen. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining me after a great Florida Panthers game today. Yeah, thanks. It was a good time. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. Rob and I came up with the idea to start this series, Talk Tesla Time, every two weeks to talk about, you know, two or three big Tesla news stories, what is in the headlines, what all the buzz is about. And we also uh, put a Elon tweet at the end of every episode. And the reason we started doing this is because Rob is the biggest Tesla news junkie that I know. And I love talking to him about Tesla, and I wanted to share these discussions with the community of viewers uh, with Tesla Lucky. So before we get started on today's uh, two topics, though, as it relates to our channel, uh, if you already love Tesla, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, or if you're just interested in electric vehicles in general, please subscribe to our channel, Tesla Lucky. All of our videos are Tesla related. And if you enjoy these videos, we hope that you will click the bell for notifications. We don't want you to miss any breaking news with Tesla. And we'd also love to hear from you in the uh, comments. So without further ado, let's get started with our two topics today. Main topics, China and Starlink. What you got for us, Rob? Yeah, well, it was a very exciting week with news out of China for Tesla. A, they were, which we've been talking about in the past, and they were finally granted permission to sell the Model 3s that are made out of the Chinese Gigafactory in China. Yeah. Awesome news. Really big news. So, um, late, over the last week or so, we've been seeing cars coming out of the facility. They were originally parked in the lots nearby, and then trucks were picking them up during the course of the week and delivering them. And then this news broke, uh, I believe, the night of the 6th. Okay. So there has already been production going on, but they weren't really able to deliver them to customers until this permission was granted. And um, the nice thing that happened when they did do that is at the same time they were granted permission, they were also granted permission that customers that buy a Tesla ch in China get a subsidy uh, okay. through the federal government the same um, way that it was in America, which is now being phased out. At the end of this year, there'll be no more subsidies for American-made Teslas. But in China, they'll have, it's about a $3,500 okay. subsidy that those vehicles will qualify for. And is that subsidy going away because there's just too many Teslas? Like it's kind of designed to like kickstart the movement? I mean, what's, do you know what the story with that is? In America or in China? In America. Yeah, so at, it's at a certain level. Once you reach that certain level of production, after you sell so many vehicles, the subsidy goes away. Do you know if that's the same in, in China? I don't think so. I mean, that was one thing that I was going to bring up about China, because some people will talk about demand and, oh, it's, you know, they're not going to, they're going to have too many vehicles, they're not going to sell them all. But in China, the interesting thing is, if you look at the vehicles that are selling, because they came up with a new energy policy, mm -hmm. they're trying to phase out all internal combustion engines in China. So that is going away. It's hard to get an estimate on when, like some provinces in China are doing it themselves by 2030, but the consensus is maybe by 2040, there'll be no more ICE vehicles permitted. So the subsidies are there to kind of keep it rolling. Right now there's 22 million cars produced in China or sold during the course of the year. 1.5 million of them are electric, so that's about 7%. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're trying to get to 100%, so they're keeping those subsidies in place. It probably will be for a long time because they're incentivizing people to make the transition. Okay. So that market is just going to be huge. I mean, China is just going to, if you look at the numbers, it's just going to keep going electric vehicles like this and ICE vehicles like this because they're going to try to get to 100% over 20-something years. So that's what's, what it's looking like. 
they're one of the countries that's kind of leading this global uh, migration to electric vehicles then would, would you, do you agree with that completely that's exactly what they're doing they they want to lead it's first because of energy they don't really want to be beholden to buying oil and coal from other countries and also because of the air quality in a lot of their cities so they're being the strongest in making the push for electric vehicles. Germany, I think, is at 5%. They might be second of vehicles being electric, and China's at 7%. But, you know, it's going to rapidly ramp up. Wow. Well, there's and a the, lot of people in China that need to buy cars, right? I mean... Very, very true. And the other interesting thing that some people forget about the China Gigafactory is it's not just for China, it's for all of Asia, including Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Um, so it's for that area of the country. So it's gonna be a market that's gonna need vehicles for a long time. Right, and you listen to all the investor calls. I'm sure the investors are paying a lot of attention to what's going on in China. Is that, is that true? Yes, but a lot of the investors that are bearish on Tesla don't give them credit for the things that they do and they think that they they're not going to make profit on the cars it's the same thing in america they think that their competition is going to um be there and they're not going to be able to sell cars so there's still this mentality that it's just hard to get over you know once tesla's they want to start producing three like a thousand per week by the end of this year and then build up to three thousand a week so one hundred and fifty thousand vehicles next year out of that gigafactory okay. and that's easy for them to do so yeah. it's gonna it's gonna happen but the people that are bearish on tesla just don't look at any of the positive right. signs right well it's exciting to think about the impact on tesla's uh, future with this you know did you have any other key takeaways from the uh, the china news this week i think that was about it i think it's just going to be super to see them get these delivered before the end of the year. It's going to help them to get a good start on next year. You know, if it got delayed until January or February, it's a little bit more difficult. But now that they're starting, they're going to have these weeks to get caught up. So it's going to be great. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. So Starlink. Let's uh, hear about Starlink. Yeah. So the reason that we're talking about it this week, it, it actually happened a few weeks ago where they deployed 60 more of the Starlink satellites with the Falcon 9, which was a record-breaking launch. They did mm -hmm. it in the middle of November. And that is so Tesla is going to have the internet capability uh, for, you know, for vehicles, but also for other reasons. But I think mostly it's to have the con connectivity with their vehicles to be able to offer a faster internet and so the cars it can, can capture the data for for the transition to full self-driving and everything because that requires a mm -hmm. lot of data when they're doing that and with the 60 that they just launched they really only need a few more maybe five or six more launches of 60 satellites and they'll be able to offer moderate coverage and okay. start actually having quote unquote Tesla or SpaceX internet. And that is anticipated by the middle of 2020. So it's not far away. You know, once they start with the rockets and the reusability, they can get the satellites up there really cheap. Well, for, for SpaceX, it's cheap because obviously they're working closely with Tesla. When SpaceX right. does it for a competitor, they're charging full freight and there's a, a bunch of profit in there. Um, they did this, the launch earlier this year as a test. They put the satellites up in orbit. They tweaked the software, and now it's running great. So um, the key to it is the way that they're put, and the, the term that it's going to be called is very low Earth orbit. So it's VLEO, and because like a normal satellite is so far from the Earth, that's what slows down the signals. But the way Tesla's doing it, they're going to be very low Earth orbit. And so the, it's going to be like 40 times faster than regular internet. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
So, so what, what are the amazing. impacts then to Tesla drivers? I mean, other than full self uh, driving, any any ideas on that? Well, I think, the, and the reason that I wanted to bring it up this week is they did announce, Tesla announced that they're going to start charging $10 a month for what's called, um, let me get this correct, uh, the premium connectivity features. Okay. Which involve a little bit more than um, just the internet. When you're doing a lot of streaming and things like that, um, that's when you're going to be paying a little bit. And they're going to grandfather in a lot of cars. So cars before like July 1st of 2018 are not going to have this, uh, this charge, this $10 a month charge. But moving forward, just like everything else that Tesla's doing, they're charging a little bit more for autopilot or full self driving, mm -hmm. I should say. But they're not charging for the basic autopilot. So they're not going to charge for basic internet service in your vehicle. They're just going to charge for the premium connectivity. So you'll have access to more data. And okay. this is where it's all kind of coming together. It's just super interesting to me how they're capturing the complete experience of what it's going to take to have a true connected um, vehicle like a Tesla. Right. So is this where you keep saying to me that Tesla is not a car, it should be renamed like, uh, what, what's the term that you used? Uh, well, I like to use the term internet vehicle, but now maybe I should call it a connected vehicle or something. And the interesting thing is uh, in China, uh, the companies there sometimes call their vehicles lifestyle vehicles. Hmm. I think that's an interesting terminology to use, you know. With, right. Well, if you went with connected vehicle, it could be like a CV instead of an EV. That's yeah, there you go. Similar. Um, interesting. Whatever it is, we all agree that Tesla is no ordinary car and that the word car just does not do it justice. I, I typically tell people it's a computer on wheels, but now it may be a connected computer on wheels. So a CCW, I don't know. You know, Elon yeah. hates uh, acronyms, so we probably should stop trying to turn it into an acronym. If he sees this, he'll get mad at us. <laughs> Good point, yeah. He wants it spelled out so there's no confusion. But exactly. it, is, it is something to watch as things happen and move forward, how everything just keeps improving little by little. Yeah. Now, I, I do wonder, because you said the older vehicles or certain vehicles are going to be grandfathered in, if there are some vehicles where the old hardware is going to mean you don't actually get the same connectivity benefits as the newer vehicles. Have you, uh, have you read anything on that yet? No, they didn't discuss that. And I'm guessing that might not be as big a concern because it's basically the connection speed is gonna be faster. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it'll matter what's in the vehicle. Okay. It's just the amount of data that's going back and forth is where they wanna capture, yeah, they wanna capture some of the costs. Right. You know, they did it in the beginning for free. They told, Tesla told everybody four years from when they started and it's actually been like five. Okay. So they waited even a little bit longer yeah. um, to implement this. Yeah. I just hope that this is something that Lucky will benefit from because, you know, we didn't get the Netflix and the Hulu and the YouTube and uh, all of that, which we're okay with that. I mean, we're in therapy, but, you know, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll survive. But, but this, I would really, uh, would really like Lucky to get in on this uh, Starlink action. Yes. Well, hopefully we'll start seeing something in the middle of next year. It'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to follow. Thank you so much for all of those updates on both the uh, China and the um, Starlink uh, topics. Um, I learned something, as I do every time I talk to you about Tesla. I hope the viewers of Tesla uh, will agree. Uh, yeah. I want to close this out with a tweet from Elon. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put it up on the screen. So Twitter had some big news from Elon uh, this week. Are you ready for big news? Absolutely. Yes, Cybertruck will have steel balls. <laughs> <laughs> 
There what? you have it. What? Straight from the, uh, <laughs> straight from Elon. Cybertruck will have steel balls. You know, Carly cannot stop talking about the steel balls and the. Oh, uh, oh, right, right. Yeah, the uh, you know <laughs> from the unveiling with the windows and everything. Um, okay. We filmed uh, a, a supercharger social time yesterday with Sterling and Bree. Hi, shout out to. Uh, Sterling and Bree, if you're watching, um, really, really had a great time talking with them about Tesla. But Carly and Sterling were talking about that incident. Sterling was wearing his Blade Runner jacket. Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. And that was a great video. Definitely, yeah, everybody should check it out. We're going to be shooting some more videos uh, with them in the weeks to come. So uh, stay tuned. You haven't seen the last of uh, Sterling and Bree on uh, Test Lucky, I promise you that. Uh, but just to follow up Elon's tweet about the, the steel balls, he does also offer uh, kind of a technical explanation for what actually happened, which seems very logical to me. Uh, uh, that The tweet about the steel balls was on November 26, uh, two days before he wrote, yup, sledgehammer impact on door cracked base of glass, which is why steel ball didn't bounce off. Should have done steel ball on window, then sledgehammer on door next time. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's only one time to ever launch the uh, Cybertruck, and he knows that. So the humor of saying, like, next time um, is just uh, amazing to me. This, uh, yeah, he's awesome. great. I love the way that he can just roll with it a little bit and kind of make fun of the way that it went down instead of freaking out yeah. about it. I mean, because, hey, at least the glass, the, the steel ball didn't go all the way through the glass. Exactly, yeah. Because it didn't happen the way he, uh, you know, said it would doesn't mean he can't find something, uh, you know, positive um, and can, can, can have a few good laughs about it. You know, good for you, Elon. Good for you. Absolutely. Well done. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Rob. We always appreciate your time and your insights uh, for the uh, viewers of Tesluki. We really do sincerely want to hear from people watching these videos what their thoughts are on these topics, any questions that you have. We will answer each and every comment. We really want this to be a community discussion. So thank you very much for watching Talk Tesla time here on Teslucky, and we will be back again in about two weeks. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Peace out, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>